Welcome back everyone. I hope the last two weeks has been good for you and you're keeping well and positive. Thanks again for your interesting questions following on from my practicing lecture. I hope many of you have already started implementing the three-stage plan and do let me know how you're getting on. You can post in at any time. Today I'm going to go through my memorising lecture. Once again you can send in any questions and tune back in for my responses. Memorising music, the five fundamentals. Remembering music comes very naturally to most people. We hear a catchy tune a couple of times and we sing it or whistle it to ourselves almost without meaning to. Often we can't even get the tune out of our head until another tune comes along. The Germans appropriately call it an earworm, an earworm. Advertisers use very catchy musical motifs to brand their products, the Nokia ringtone, the three notes that you hear at the end of the Danon yogurt advert, the chord when you start up your computer. When it comes to learning music, we are constantly using our memory to recall information. In order to prepare music for a performance, we study the score and learn how to play and interpret the music. Each time we practice the piece, we use our memory to recall what we've learned during our last visit. If we didn't memorize, every time we practiced, we'd be starting from scratch. It's normal that after studying a piece for some time, we remember it pretty well. The better our general preparation, the more likely we'll have memorized the piece without specifically focusing on memorizing. However, during one of your performances, have you experienced a sudden panic, a split second of not remembering what happens next? Did you find it terrifying? It's probably the memory of this kind of terrifying experience that makes many people very nervous about performing from memory. It's an extremely common fear. And to make things worse, when musicians finally opt instead to play from the score, they feel bad and embarrassed for doing so. But even with the music in front of you, you can go wrong. Perhaps you move your gaze away from the music for a short while and then, feeling you need to look back at the score for reassurance, suddenly you can't find your place. This can cause a feeling of panic, a fumbling for notes or even worse, a complete stop. For all these reasons and for the purpose of performing from memory with confidence and freedom, I have formulated a clear and comprehensive system for memorising music. Every player has a different balance of memory strengths and weaknesses. It is rare that people have specifically learnt how to memorise. My system is designed to make you more aware of your natural tendencies, to fill the gaps in your knowledge and build strength in the areas that most often let you down. Some of us have a very strong memory of the way the music sounds, the tune, the harmony. We can sing the whole piece without difficulty. Others remember photographically in detail how the score looks they can play through a piece watching the score in their mind's eye. We're all different and we all have different skills and challenges. Before I explain the five fundamentals of memorising, I'd like to make some further points about music in general. As I've said in my previous lecture, music is a magical and hugely powerful force. Sound is our medium. We are the creators of sound. In the advanced stages of studying a composition, when you have resolved technical issues, when you have decided how you would like to interpret and play the music, when you understand the architecture of the piece, you'll be ready to start the memorising process. The deeper your knowledge, the faster the memorising process will be. So here are the five fundamentals. Number one, oral. Number two, mechanics. Number three, architecture. 
number four, photographic, and number five, interpretation. Number one, oral. This is memory of the sound. Memory of the sound of the music in all its parts, melody, harmony, rhythm. Number two, mechanics in two parts. Part one, muscle memory. Part two, conscious memory of what you mechanically need to do and feel. Number three, architecture. The memory of the form of the music, how the parts fit together and relate to each other. Number four, photographic, the visual memory of the score. Number five, interpretation, memory of your artistic understanding of the music, memory of the emotional content of the music, of your musical intentions from small details to larger plans. For example, a small detail such as the warming of a single note, a larger plan such as the range of moods in a single movement. When you have competence in all five fundamentals, you'll understand that the five parts make up one whole, each part supporting the others. In performance, if everything else is flowing wonderfully, we may not need to be conscious of individual fundamentals, but having the information prepared and stored allows us to draw into our conscious mind any one or combination of fundamentals, even for a split second, to reinforce our confidence or to help us in a moment of distraction. You'll probably recognise the feeling of distraction when someone coughs loudly or a mobile phone goes off during a concert or maybe when a completely irrelevant and distracting thought comes into your mind. It can break your flow and your focus. Now I'll explain how to work on each of the five fundamentals. None of this training requires you to play your instrument until you have completed all five steps of my memorising system. In fact, you should not use or hold your instrument. This is because when you play your instrument, you use types of oral and mechanical memory that you've naturally established and they disguise weaknesses in other fundamentals. This leads you to assume you remember the music much better than you actually do. One advantage of my memorising system is that you can train in almost any convenient location. For example, while you're travelling or at a time when playing your instrument would disturb others. So, we're at the point where you've spent many hours practising, you've worked at the technical difficulties, you've shaped the music as you would like it, you are thinking of an upcoming performance, but you're not really secure with playing the piece from memory. Now you put your instrument away and start this process. Step one, oral. This is a memory of the sound, memory of the sound of the music in all its parts, melody, harmony, rhythm. Have your score in your hand or on a stand, making sure it is closed or covered. You must not be able to see the notes. Sing in your head from the start of the piece and continue for as long as you can. During any rest, sing the parts other instruments play. As soon as you doubt what to sing, open your score, find the place and remind yourself how the music continues. Using the score, practice this little section by singing it in your head until you feel confident you remember it. Then close the score and start from a point before the section, perhaps even the beginning of the piece if you're close. Continue this process until you're able to sing from beginning to end of the movement or piece. You can check the score as many times as necessary. Do not be concerned that this process takes a lot of time. Memorising the oral is a crucial fundamental that cannot be missed. You cannot play from memory without a reliable oral memory. Step two, mechanics. This is in two parts. Part one, muscle memory. 
You will no doubt know what muscle memory feels like. It's when you can play without thinking what you need to do mechanically, like being on autopilot. Muscle memory is extremely important. Without it, you'd have to consciously control every technical movement. You'd have no time to be creative. Playing even the simplest of music would take up all your mental powers. Muscle memory is the subconscious memory telling your body what to do. As a part of memorising music, muscle memory can sometimes cause disturbance when it stands alone. For example, do you recognise the experience of performing and suddenly forgetting what to play, but your hands continue anyway? In one sense, it saves you from stopping, but in another sense, it is terrifying watching your hand as though they were not your hands at all. To train muscle memory, you need to sing the music through from memory as you did in oral step one while moving your hands as though you were playing on your instrument in an exaggerated manner. In other words, you play air cello, but every movement is much larger. Every note, every bow stroke, every change of string and position of the left hand must be decisive and huge. Again, as soon as you have any doubt as to what note you are going to play, or which fingering or bowing, which string or which position you should play in, stop and look at the music and remind yourself what to do. Practice that passage carefully, looking at the music, singing in your head or aloud, and playing air cello with huge movements. This is, of course requires that you have made decisions on bowings and fingerings. If you haven't, this step will highlight what still needs to be decided. As in step one, work your way through until you can play without the score from start to finish, without doubts or concerns. Part two of the mechanics is the conscious memory of what you mechanically need to do and feel. This means knowing which note, fingering and bowing you need to use without moving a muscle. To train for this, sing the music in your head or aloud while imagining yourself playing your instrument. Imagine every movement, every fingering and bowing, but keep your hands still at all times. You could place your hands on your lap. You need to be sure you're not using your muscle memory to remind yourself what to do. Even a little twitch in a finger can be a reminder, but now we must just train your mind. As in the previous steps, stop every time you have a doubt. Check the music, practice the passage strictly within the bounds of this step, this fundamental, close the music, repeat and continue. Step three, architecture. The memory of the construction of the music, the form of the music, how the sections of the music fit together and relate to each other. This requires analysis of the music. We need to know the keys, the form, ABA for example, how the music develops. The music is a road map. Be very attentive to detailed changes in repeated sections and to phrases that repeat in different keys. These are often the places that cause confusion. Pinpoint these T junctions. They are the places where a repeated phrase exits to the next phrase differently. Confusion often occurs when a player takes the left turn rather than the right. There is a famous example when a violinist started the Bach Chacon and in the fifth bar exited out of the first theme into the final five bars of the piece. The chaconne was over in just 35 seconds. A touch embarrassing. Study architectural memory by looking carefully at the score. You can label the keys, the sections, the transitions, the danger points. You can circle the phrases that need to be compared to similar phrases elsewhere. You can use a pencil or colours, you can write in the margins, or you can simply try and remember all these details without writing at all. 
but you must find out which method suits you best. You can draw diagrams or pictures, you can use any method that appeals to you, that stimulates your memory of the architecture of the music. Once again, look at the score and then close it. Then sing through the music, which is oral step one, whilst playing air cello, mechanic step two, while also thinking about the architecture, step three. Once again, if you have any doubts, stop immediately and look at the score. Check what you doubted, study the reason and then close the score. Go back a few bars, repeat and continue. I'd like to say at this point that during each step, you're likely to have memory doubts, which are either in the same places as before or are in new places. Don't worry about this. This is natural and in fact helpful. This is your memorising study period and like practising on the instrument, issues can come up at any moment. You learn from your mistakes. The mistakes and memory failings are simply highlighting a weakness. In those weak areas, you need to find greater awareness of oral mechanics and architecture. Step four, photographic the visual memory of the score. This fundamental varies considerably from one individual to the next. For each person, it also varies in importance. You may find that in the first few performances of a work, your photographic memory is quite strong. Later on, you may not be aware of it or use it at all. However, visual memory is still an influential fundamental. Take, for example, the situation when you've used a certain score for some years. Let's say you bought a score in order to learn a piece aged 16, and now at 22, you're still using that score to play or relearn the piece. If you then take another edition of the score, where it starts on the left page rather than the right, where the spacing means the recapitulation is in the middle of page three then rather than the end of page two, you can become quite disorientated. It can throw off your sense of where you are in the movement. It can make a very familiar piece seem strangely unfamiliar. I know many musicians who would rather remark their old score with directions from the latest edition rather than start using a new score. Photographic memory is like having a scan of the score in your head. Do you know the party game where about 25 objects are placed on a tray? The tray is then covered with a cloth and everyone tries to list all the objects. You try to remember as much detail as possible on the tray. The placement of objects, the colours, the shapes. This is a great game for training your photographic memory. Likewise, with your music score, you need to create a visual scan you need to look at the notes and the location of the different sections, the key and time signatures, dynamic markings, written directions, phrase markings, bowings and fingerings. Close your eyes and try to visually remember all those details. Then look again at your score and add in more details. Again, close your eyes and test your visual memory. You can keep repeating this process until you feel confident. The reason I've put this photographic fundamental as step four is because it's crucial to establish the other forms of memory first. If you simply replace the physical copy of the score with a memorized copy, you might still rely on reading rather than having thoroughly absorbed the oral mechanics and the architecture. Step five, interpretation. To memorize music well requires a deep understanding of the music and how we play it. We need a very clear and detailed knowledge of our interpretation. We must be sure how we craft every note and phrase, both musically and technically. We must have clear decisions about how we would like the music to sound and to be communicated and what we love about the music. These are 
In any case, the core reasons for playing music. They constitute the strongest force that bonds all the memorising fundamentals together. Interpretation gives meaning to the whole memorising process and gives it depth. I could say that in many ways, step five, the interpretation, comes before anything else. The better you understand your feelings and interpretive decisions, the clearer the oral mechanics and architecture memory can be. But for the sake of explaining my system, it is simpler to put interpretation as the last step. So this is how to memorise your interpretation. Open the score and sing through the music, in your head or aloud, concentrating solely on the purely musical elements. Be decisive in your mind about the pulse, the character, the phrasing, the colour of the sound, the energy, the flow, in fact every element of musical feeling. If you are hesitant and doubt what you like the music to sound like, what the musical intentions should be, stop and study the passage and make clear decisions. These decisions don't have to be decisions for life, but for now and for the memorising process. Close the score and sing through the piece, making sure your imaginary performance is full of your musical decisions. Try to exaggerate the qualities and elements so they're really powerful, just as they need to be when you perform on stage. Now it is time to give a performance of the piece without your instrument. So, either playing air cello or imagining yourself playing, perform the music with all your heart. Enjoy the fact that the intonation is perfect, there are no bad shifts, no technical issues. I know this sounds a little strange, but believe me, I have memorised like this on aeroplanes many times. It really does work. To sum up, the five fundamentals make up one whole. It may seem daunting to go through this whole process, but I promise you it will always be to your advantage. Following this system is a form of highly concentrated practice, so you will learn so much. Not only will you have securely memorised, but in doing so you'll have studied on a very deep level all aspects of your musical performance. When you perform in concert from memory, there's no need to consciously be thinking about everything all the time. It's just necessary to have the information stored and available to you so that you retrieve what you need at will. With this system, you have a fantastic route to being in the zone when performing. Now, take your instrument Put everything into practice and perform on your instrument as though you were in the concert hall. And one very important point, make absolutely sure the music stand and score are completely out of your sight. It is vital to experience the empty space in front of you during your practice sessions, just as it will be in the concert hall. Otherwise, at the concert, you may suddenly feel exposed and disconcerted by the empty space. I fully appreciate that working on my system may seem a pretty daunting and time-consuming task. But as with all challenges in music, we can start gently and quickly learn to be efficient and skillful. So here's a simple starter. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I'll quickly take you through the five fundamentals and let's see how you do. So here's the music of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and we're going to start with oral step one. So sing through the music and make sure that you feel very comfortable with your ability to sing from beginning to end. Then close your eyes and test your memory and see if you can sing aloud or in your head all the way through. If you have any problems at all open your eyes and check that passage and then close your eyes and sing all the way through. And when you're really comfortable, um, we'll move on to step two. So while you're doing that, 
Please put me on pause until you're absolutely sure that you feel comfortable with step one oral. So now we move to mechanics, part one, air cello. So now what you're going to do is you're going to sing through the music, but this time you're going to play through as though you were on your instrument, very, very big movements in the air, making sure you're really concentrating on actual physical playing, every note, every fingering, every bow. So once again, you're going to check your way through it, close your eyes, then test yourself to see if you remember everything about the physical movements while you sing. Check Open your eyes if you need to check anything. Again, close your eyes. See if you can get all the way through. And when you're really confident with that, we'll move on to the next part. So put me on pause while you go through that process. And now we're on mechanics part two, which is imagined movements. So once again, go through this time with your hands on your lap, not moving a muscle, but imagining yourself playing through everything you can. Imagine those movements, those physical movements while you sing the music in your head. Test yourself, close your eyes, do the whole process again and please put me on pause now until you're really comfortable with that. Now we move to architecture. So look very carefully at the music. Have a look how the form is. Have a look how the phrases are. Have a look about the repetition or any details that we can understand about the whole architecture and the small details. Look very carefully about that. Then I want you to close your eyes and play through using air cello or imagined movements and concentrating as you play and sing through on the architecture, on the form of the music, the shape, and the phrases and places where you would breathe, everything that's clear about the architecture. Put me on pause, please. Good, and now we're on to photographic memory. So looking carefully again at the music, see all the details that you can. For instance, that there are four bars on each line, that there are three lines, that it's in the treble clef, that it says conspirito, that there are dynamic markings, all the details that you can see. Try to make a visual scan in your head. Then close your eyes and see if you can imagine the page and all those details. Again, open your eyes if you're not sure. Close your eyes again and test yourself to see how much you can remember, including all the words on the page, don't forget. So again, put me on pause and then we'll move on. And finally, we have step five, interpretation. So now, assuming, of course, that we've worked on the piece for a long time, making sure that we understand how we feel about the music, how we're going to characterise it and so on. So now we're looking at the music, trying to remember all those details about interpretation. And then you're going to close your eyes and using all the techniques so far, so singing in your head, using either air cello or imagined movements, thinking about how to play the music in a really fabulous way, how the real message of the music is going to come across. So I want you to think really about the power of the music. Now, again, close your eyes, check that you've got all this together, check things again if you need to, test yourself, and please press pause. So now you've been through all five fundamentals of the memorising process. I think that you'll not only really remember Twinkle Twinkle Little Star fantastically well, but maybe you'll appreciate how your strengths and weaknesses are in memorising and realise that it's a fascinating and not so difficult process to go through. Well done everyone. Thanks for joining me. Remember to post your questions on the blackboard by Monday, May the 18th. I'll do another question and answer video for you next week. I hope you all keep well and stay safe. Happy memorising!